Let's look at one approach that can make your code much cleaner and more object oriented by using polymorphism. Here we have a command class used to create users based on some input. It's basically multi-way branching. It's easy to write but difficult to extend. If you have to add an additional user type, then you have to modify existing code. With our example, I'll show you how to extend functionality by creating new classes and methods instead of modifying existing ones. First, let's get an idea of how to use the command class and the issues it presents. The execute async method just takes a user input object, so that's no big deal. And then we can just pass in the username and the type. And we can see here that we will need to pass in regular, premium or trial. However, this isn't very ex expressive and it doesn't convey our intent very well because the intent is actually hidden inside this user type property. Also passing an invalid value won't break anything at design time, but it will add runtime. So passing in this value right here won't actually do anything at the moment, but if you run it, it will throw. We can mitigate this error by using enums, but that's really besides the point. One way to express our intent and make the code much cleaner is to use specialized classes that captures the concept of creating regular, premium and trial users. Right now, everything is just smooshed into one class, but we can easily separate this logic by taking this user input class and actually splitting it into three separate ones that express our intent much, much clearer. I'll just do this real quick, just a second. All right, there we go. So now we have actually taken this user input and split into three different classes. Obviously they don't exist at the moment and the execute async expects the user input. But let's see how we can change this execute async to use polymorphism instead of the regular traditional branching. Okay, so back at the create user command, let's get rid of the switch case and introduce some polymorphic behavior. I'm just gonna write the new method up here. It's gonna be essentially the same. We will create a user and pass it to the, to the repository. All right, so here's where the magic is at. So this is what we want the method to look like. And the only part that is missing is this interface, I create user input and the create user method on that uh, interface. Right, so let's just get a bit of space up here to implement these new types. So let's begin with the interface. Right, so at this point, the uh, execute async method is actually pretty much done. The interfaces are now implemented and it's all good. But we know that we can't really do much with an interface alone. We actually need concrete classes that we can pass to this method. So let's just create those. And we need a class for each type of user that we can make. So we need the, the input type for regular user, the input type for premium, and the input type for trial. And we will just use records because we are modern. And then we can just copy this one. And there we go. Now we have the input for the regular user. And we just need the two others. A bit of copy pasting here. We don't need to do that, but I will show you how to avoid that in a, in a second. And then we just need the last one. Right, so now we have actually taken each of these branches on creating users and placed them in separate classes. As you see, we got some redundancy with the username property. So we can make an abstract class to counter this redundancy. This is not necessarily something you would want, but it makes sense in this particular case. So let me just show you how that would look. And then we can use this uh, base class. We will place the username up there. Right, so it just got a whole lot cleaner. There is now no redundancy, but sometimes like this is not something you would want to do in every scenario, every case and so on. This just makes sense in this particular case and you can have fun with it, try things out for yourself and see how it works and whatever you like. So there's really no right and wrong way. I guess some would say there is a right and wrong way, but it really comes down to how you like to write code and not so much about what other people says about how you should write code. So this is one way you can completely eliminate the need for a switch case or if else or any of the traditional branching, right? So if we get into this great user command, we can now delete this method completely. But before I do that, I just want to show you the differences from the client perspective when you're calling this code. All right, so here we have the execute async method that you saw before, and we can either pass it the old user input or the new I create user input type. So let's just try and create the three users with this user input.
All right, so one of the issues here is that we are calling the same method with the same type, but we expect wildly different outcomes. Also, the intent is not very clear. If you just look at this, you don't see that, okay, this is definitely a trial user. This is definitely a premium user. And even if you do a spelling mistake, then you can mess everything up. Obviously, we can use enums to prevent that and we can use constants, but that's not really the point, right? It doesn't convey any intent by doing that. Instead, we can now use the use command or execute async command with one of the new types. And we also get these types from the IntelliSense. Let's just create a regular user. And there we go. Now the intent is right in your face. You know that you're creating a regular user. You know you're creating a premium user and a trial user. You don't need to specify this additional information because that information is already inside the name of the class. So it's much cleaner. Right, so at this point, you might wonder how do you actually use this in a real application such as an ASP.NET Core application? And let me just show you that real quick. And here we have it. Here we have a user controller that takes the create user command. And we have specialized endpoints that used only to create, for example, a regular user, a premium user, or a trial user. So from the client perspective, this makes a whole lot more sense because you don't have one endpoint that can do multiple things. You have very specialized endpoints that it will only do one thing. And also each endpoint can evolve uh, separately. So for example, if you needed to add more properties to the um, create regular user, then you just add it to this record. You would not have to add it to one type that was used everywhere. And the same goes with any of the other ones. So if you wanted more information for a premium user, then you can evolve this endpoint separately from the two others. And that's really one of the huge benefits. So yeah, it is more code. It's a completely different way of coding when you start to eliminating your traditional branches, but it also provides you a lot of flexibility. So yeah, there you have it. Now you know at least one more way you can make your code more object-oriented by using polymorphism and how to remove traditional branching. Additionally, this will also provide you with much cleaner code, but on the other hand, also requires you to write more code.